Brothers and sisters, welcome to the celebration of the Passion of the Lord, Good Friday. We now pray. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us now open ourselves to hear the Word of God on this day, the second of our days of the Triduum. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance, and his appearance beyond, beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. Those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hid their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away, and who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked, in a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in, in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death, and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many, and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us respond to God's word. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, redeem me, O Lord, 
O faithful God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors, and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered death. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud voices and cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he has heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who believe, obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden, into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. And Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. And Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers 
the tribune, and the Jewish guard seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus, but Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of these man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gathered. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. And when he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you speak and strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there, keeping warm, and they said to him, Are you not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. And immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves, and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die, so Pilate went back into the praetorium, and summoned Jesus, and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Peter answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is true? When he had said this, he went out, to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him, had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, 
Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak, and he said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! And Peter said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you, and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the Son, one who handed me over to you, has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. And when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stove Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon, and he said to the Jews, Behold your king! They cried out, Take him away! Take him away, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what's called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Peter, Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Peter, Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. And Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven into one piece from top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it will be. In order the scripture passage might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were also his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. And when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit.
Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water floweth out. The night witness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened, so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, They will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now each year we do come to this part of the uh, Triduum celebration in order really that we might encounter the God who is not really removed from our own experiences, who can appreciate our, our difficulties, our struggles, and our troubles. At no other time in our memories has a pandemic called us now to know Christ's suffering and death and encounter a God who actually suffered intensely and who continues to suffer many of the same things that we suffer today so that we will be held by his compassion, that we will understand his empathy, even of those who placed his son there. We actually come face to face with our God, who understands our lives, because God experienced it and is experiencing our lives today. Brothers and sisters, this year in our Lord's Golgotha, we can now once more allow ourselves to be embraced by the deepest form of understanding and compassion that the world has ever seen. We can actually come to know and enter into a deeper relationship with the God who understands us and willingly cries out to show us mercy even in the face of our own brokenness, our own fears, our own pettiness, the face of our sins. And we can do that in our homes. We can certainly do that with one another whom we might share that home with, or whom we might call on our cell phones, or we might want to invite into a little party this Easter Sunday. We come this year to be embraced, once again by Jesus on the cross, because it is from that cross we can come to understand the challenge of what forgiveness really means. Today, we can come to realize that we can forget, though, that we are more than just the sum of our sins, because that's how Christ sees us. We can fail to grasp that forgiveness is a gift of God, offered without fail to those who ask for it. And while we sometimes can't offer it to others, God certainly will. In this walk of Calvary this day, as we now will enter into the third day of the Triduum, we're asked to encounter the Jesus 
who does understand our difficulties and who knows confusion that pain and suffering causes, who knows the heartaches of betrayal and denial, but who also knows how to love, even in the midst of all of that, and actually asks us to do the same. We come because Jesus knows us, and we want to encounter him. We want to be embraced by him. He knows our helplessness. He knows our vulnerabilities. He knows our love now and at the hour of our death. This year on Good Friday, we can be caught up by his relationship with the Father and his cries about distancing and abandonment as we do so now. Jesus knows that when we struggle to continue to be in relationship with the Father and wonder where, where God is as we pray in doubt and darkness, we are praying to someone who understands and refuses to abandon us even as he hung upon the cross as he entrusted his own mother to us. This year, we want his walk of Calvary to experience the God who does free us who loves us into healing and wholeness from that cross. We walk his walk and talk his talk from the cross in order that we're going to take up the mantle of discipleship that gives witness to the God who redeems and saves us because God knows who and what we are and one day will become because of that live and that forgiveness that comes from the cross of his son. Yes, the Lord is looking to us to say, are you that man's disciples that others would ask of us, especially at this time? And we can say, yes, I am that man's disciple, and I will suffer with my own cross, even in this time of uncertainty. This year, we're going to join with Jesus all of our sufferings and our sorrows upon the cross. That the COVID and so many other failures and, and situations in our relationships and in our world way down upon us. But we're going to join with Jesus this year, not here in the church, but where you are, knowing what your crosses can be, but knowing that you will join those sufferings upon the cross and ask that a blessed mother who participated in Jesus' pain to have her steadfast faith and her joy when it comes to the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is at this time that we begin to pray for all the necessary needs within our church, our world, and among the many different peoples who are crying out that the Lord hear them and answer them. So let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Let us pray, dearly beloved, in Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations. Watch over the works of your mercy, that your church, spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for Most Holy Father, Pope Francis I, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God.
Almighty ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our Bishop Peter, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the Church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens and candidates, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their innermost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having free received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Jewish people, let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray also, brothers and sisters, for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right with sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people, to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God, the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all the toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And this year we've been invited to add two more prayers to our time. For those who are stricken ill, by the coronavirus. Let us pray also, dear friends, to our Almighty Father for those who are stricken ill by the coronavirus, that he may wipe the face of the earth from disease, give hope to the sick, comfort to families, and strengthen doctors and nurses with courage. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of all that is good, you sent your Son as the divine physician, cast out disease and the current attack against us. All comfort those who suffer and bring close to yourself all who are in danger of death. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And for those who have died as a result of infection, let us pray, dearly beloved, for all those who have died as a result of infection, that God may look 
may not look upon the sins of the departed, but see in their sufferings the face of his own suffering son, and have mercy on their souls. Almighty and merciful Father, hear our cry for those who have died and are dying from this virus, and send your angels to minister to their souls, who we know belongs to your boundless mercy, to be ever kind, and look upon one's faith and righteousness through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, in our third part of our celebration uh, this, this afternoon, we do what has always been known to us, called the Adoration of the Holy Cross. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us
Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, persevere in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads for and pray for God's blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And brothers and sisters, tomorrow we will have our celebrations at 4 o'clock for the English celebration for the Easter Vigil, at 6 o'clock for the Spanish celebration, and at 8 for the Vietnamese. On Easter Sunday, we will have our Masses at 8 in English, 9.30 in Vietnamese, and 11 o'clock in Spanish. May God continue to bless you and keep you. And let us now continue to silently reflect 
upon the way in which our Lord trod, so that we would know the depth of his love and the forgiveness and redemption from our sins. <laughs>